Well, hi there, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rusty, and this is my channel where I talk about my favorite movies, mostly horror, and my favorite music, mostly metal. And yes, we are going to do Scream 5. Now, I just got this in. Interestingly enough, I had it in my cart um, when I noticed this. This is a double feature. Um, that has Scream, the original Scream, and Scream 5 on their own discs. So you get both of them. Um, I have that collector's Scream box set. You know, the big thick one with the thing. So I still have all the, the four Screams on DVD. I haven't upgraded them. So I saw the opportunity to start that by getting Scream and Scream 5 on Blu-ray at the same time and so yeah now I've got the original Scream and Scream 5 on Blu-ray and it was for the same price so basically I got Scream the original Scream on Blu-ray for free and it's the newest transfer so yeah cool liked it Alrighty, so let's do the damn thing. Okay, so Scream 5 starts out with the uh, Terra, the intro. We always have the intro, and um, it's a very, very good intro. Um, I'll tell you right up front, I really, really liked Scream 5. Um, I have some issues that knocked off some points, but to be honest, they're just, well, two of them are just personal issues. Everybody has their personal issues. I won't damn you for yours. You don't damn me for mine. As silly as they may be, that's what makes them personal issues. They're not really technical. They're not really, you know, analytical or critical. It's just something personal about you. So this movie opens up with Tara. Oh, this is going to be difficult to keep this short. No, 10 to midnight is what's going to be difficult to keep short. But um, we get the intro with Tara. She's on the phone with her friend Amber. And um, I really liked that intro. Um, she gets a call that seems innocent at first, but then it kicks in. And it's Ghostface who wants to know what's her scary movie. And I really liked a lot of the references in this movie. I guess they tried to make it uber meta or whatever, but it's still cool to hear things called out. You know, that's what meta is all about. Uh, to hear things called out that you may love or whatever. You know, what's your favorite movie? Oh, she prefers the, uh, the Babadook and um, whatever. And she has the little joke about elevated horror, or I think it's a joke anyway. And um, that whole elevated horror shit is a joke to me anyway. But um, she mentions hereditary and stuff like that when he starts asking her about stab. No, 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 don't ask me about slashers. Ask me about elevated horror like hereditary um, or the witch, you know. So that was kind of funny. Uh, the scene was very brutal. And that's another thing that I'll have to say about this movie is that it was a lot more brutal kills than I expected to be honest with you I don't know why I had this uh, prejudgment of what it was going to be and when I look back at the others they weren't really that so I really don't know where it comes from I guess it's because Scream has become such a staple of pop culture that you expect it to be pop culture and you might realize if you go back and watch Scream that they're really not pop culture. They're not teeny bopper movies. So why I was surprised at how brutal and gory the kills were, I don't know. I don't guess there's any really other than you just like so tired of hearing Scream and Halloween you only get to hear from all of these channels they drive me nuts I mean all you get to hear is these same six franchises and they hardly ever talk about anything else so maybe that's why I prejudged it you know 
because I'm telling you the truth. Anybody out there, you put stuff on there. I'm I'm sorry. I'll watch one or two of your Halloween retreads, but I tell you, there gets to a point where when your notifications pop up and it's some more shit about Halloween, it's some more shit about Scream, it's some more shit about Nightmare on Elm Street, it's some more shit about Friday the Thirteenth. I ain't even gonna go watch because I'm just tired of hearing the same stuff. Now you might be going, as you talk about Scream, yeah, look at my channel though. That's what I'm saying. It's the constant. I'm talking about channels that just fucking don't talk about nothing else. And I'm getting on a tangent, aren't I? Which is cutting into the keeping it short. So, we had this really cool intro. And um, Tara actually lives through it, unlike you know the other movies the intro was actually lived through she's in the hospital and this causes her sister Sam and Sam's uh, boyfriend Richie uh, to come now they have a strained relationship we don't really know why at first but they come back to Woodsboro to you know because her sister has been just nearly brutally stabbed um, or slashed so um, we sort of get introduced to our little group, which I really didn't like any of them. Um, we have Amber, Mindy, Chad, Wes. I do like Wes. Li you know, Liv, Liv, Liv Tyler, Liv, Liv Tyler. L-I-V, Liv. I guess her name is Liv. Um, is Liv short for anything? Olivia, maybe? I don't know. Liv Tyler. I keep getting off track here, don't I? So, um, we see right pretty much not too far into the movie, we see Billy Loomis. Sam is having visions of Billy Loomis, and we really don't know why at the beginning. You know, it's like, why is she having visions of Billy Loomis? You know, and it was cool to see Skeet back. Um, but yeah, so they go, they get there, uh, they start learning about it. You have a lot of meta conversations. Uh, we get to learn a little bit about these annoying little friend group of hers and how most all of them are related in some way to the legacy characters. Um, we have uh, Randy's sisters, two kids, that's Mindy and Chad. Um, and Sam, of course, we find out about her. So Tara is all cut up at the hospital. They start trying to figure out, oh no, why is this happening again? What's going on? Uh, Sam and Richie <coughs> end up going to see Dewey. Um, Dewey doesn't want anything to do with all of this. Him and Gail have gotten divorced. They're not together anymore. He climbed into a bottle and is no longer sheriff. Instead, we have Lemon Square Judy is the sheriff. Wes is her son. Um, so um, they ask him for help. He doesn't want anything to do with it. However, you know, uh, he ends up calling Sydney. He ends up calling uh, or messaging Gail um, and telling them. And he decides to go and help. So he shows up in town. And they start trying to figure out who the killer is. Uh, he's actually the one that's the most in the movie of the legacy characters. Gail and Sydney, you know, come in a little later. So he's actually got the most face time in this movie um, until he gets skewered. But as they continue to try to figure out, you know, who did it and what's going on. Uh, Sam continues to have visions upon which we finally learn that she is actually the illegitimate daughter of Billy Loomis. Okay, and so that's not only the reason that she's having these visions, but it's also the reason that there is this strain between her <coughs> and her sister, Tara. Um, at first we think the strain is because she walked out on them and left as soon as she was old enough to leave but the truth is that she blames herself for um, her father leaving them 
because when she found it out, when she was 13, she confronted her mother, um, not knowing that her father, or who she thought was her father, was standing behind her when she confronted her mother about it. This caused the father to find out he left that very night and never came back. So there's a lot of backstory and guilt going on between all of this. Um, our next kills, of course, is, um, well, the first kill is Vince. I really loved that kill. This is a little punk guy who had, uh, he was a former boyfriend of Liv's, um, and he had been coming around kind of like harassing them at a bar at the club. He gets killed out in the parking lot, which I thought was a really cool kill because it was just, you know, to the neck. I liked that kill. Something new you know, and um, right into his jugular vein. I thought that was really good. Now, it turns out that he was connected because they're like, well, why did he kill this stranger, this, you know, just random dude? Um, and it turns out he wasn't very random. Oh, no, what was it? He was Stu's sister's son. So Stu was Vince's uncle. So he is connected to the past. So they deal with all of that. We have the Vince kill. Next we get Judy's kill, Sheriff Judy, which was really brutal. And I loved the way that whole scene was set up. I really liked the way they kept faking me out with Wes and the house. Um, this was one of the places, though, of course, where the movie got a personal point knocked off of it. It's rated R. It's bloody. It's gory. It's rated R, dude. You missed the one opportunity for a butt shot. Why is there no nudity in Scream? This isn't PG-13. What's your problem? Okay. So, but anyway. So, Wes... They kept faking me out like there were so many opportunities for Ghostface to appear, you know, by the closet, by the door, and every time by the refrigerator, you know, the fridge door, but every time you thought when he closed it or when he turned around that Ghostface was going to be there, he wasn't until you got to the point where you thought it was another fake out and it wasn't and he was there. So. Ghostface, like, killed Judy in the yard, which I thought was kind of interesting. I mean, first of all, you come screaming into the neighborhood. This was a moment of suspension of disbelief. You come screaming into the neighborhood, and it's not exactly an isolated neighborhood, with, you know, cherries and berries flashing and the siren going. You pull up, you run up to the door, and you get basically butchered in the front yard, the bottom of the steps, in broad daylight, and nobody, nowhere, like, looked out the window or came outside. Now, granted, it happened pretty fast after she pulled up, but if you come screaming by here with cherries and berries going... And full, I'm going to go on to the porch and look <laughs> at what's going on. So, like, no one saw that. It was really weird. But then, like I said, we have all of the fake outs in the house. I thought they were cute, the fake outs. Um, because it, when, when, it finally, when Ghostface finally was behind Wes, I had given up. <laughs> I'm like, you've just faked me out eight times thinking that Ghostface was going to be behind him. And then suddenly he was so okay give you that one that was pretty good so uh, we get the horrible West kill once again my record holds you kill my crush before the movie is halfway done okay I understand it's a rule it's a horror movie rule I don't know why I never did anything to Hollywood but for some reason, there is a rule whenever they make a horror movie. And that is, there's this dude, and 
this is going to be his crush. I don't know why. Maybe it's psychic or something. But this is going to be his crush. So we have to kill him within 20 minutes of the movie. But I'm not bitter about it. So, Wes is dead. This, of course, makes all the cops come running because the sheriff's dead as well. So every cop in town is like, oh my God, they killed the sheriff. So they left Tara unguarded at the hospital where um, Sam, Richie, and Wes, I mean Sam, Richie, and Dewey all try to get to the hospital to save Tara. Now, Richie is already there. He gets there first. He gets attacked. Um, Dewey, keeping the name straight, and Sam shows up. I've only seen it twice so far. Um, and uh, that's a really good scene. And then they kill Dewey. They manage to escape Ghostface with a nice little fight. And they start to leave. And Dewey sends him on. And he stays to finish the job. Well, he doesn't finish the job because he gets killed ugly, like a knife to the back, a knife to the front, and we get some upswing as well. So he is pretty much gutted, and he is really and truly and for sure dead. And that's where it lost another point. I know, it's okay. I'm all right with it. I accept it. Personally, I'd rather you kill fucking Gale or Sydney than Dewey, but, you know, whatever. I accept it, but I still had to take a point from you because you killed my Dewey. You killed Dewey. And, and there's just no way I cannot take a point off for that. I just can't. It's not in my nature. It's just the way it is. You could have killed Sydney or Gail and I wouldn't have took a point off for you. But we all have our things. So... I put Gail is sad. Well, yeah, she is. So, <laughs> so uh, Dewey is dead. Um, there's the big fight. And um, Richie and Sam and Tara, or actually Sam decides it. And that is that the best thing that we can do is just get the hell out of Dodge, right? So they are saying, you know, that they're going to leave. Well, Gail has, of course, arrived, and Sydney has arrived, because she's not going to have it. She's got a husband and two kids now, so whenever shit like this pops up, she's going to come deal with it to make sure the shit don't follow her home, okay? So she shows up to deal with it, and uh, she's not exactly happy about Sam and them. You know, she's like, you can't leave. We, you cannot leave these things unfinished. You know, you, you have to finish it. Um, or it will not end. So, they don't want to, though. They want to leave. When all of a sudden, Tara finds out that she doesn't have her inhaler. She, she, you know, and she can't make it to their town that they're going to without an inhaler. So, she convinces them to stop by Amber's house, where Amber is having a house party. To celebrate the death of all of her friends. You know, Wes and the sheriff and everyone. But it's supposed to be a wake, but it turned into a house party, which is Gen Z for you. Um, so, we have this going on now. We have the party scene. We have uh, Mindy doing her thing and Chad and Liv, you know, doing their thing. Um, there's there's some really good banter. There's some really good scenes. Uh, Chad ends up going outside to try to find Liv, uh, where he gets attacked and um, slashed up real good. I liked that scene as well. Like I said, I like the kills in this movie. Then um, Mindy gets attacked. Sydney and Gail have showed up. So Amber comes running out, you know, 
Oh my god, he shot me. I've been I've been stabbed. Or yeah, not stabbed. I, I've been stabbed. I've been stabbed. And I did like the way that Gail and Sydney looked at each other and was like, oh, well, I don't know. What do you think about it? No, it's a fake. Oh, fuck it. And she starts shooting at them. So that was pretty cool. That was a pretty cool scene. So we have found out that Amber, after she blew Liv's brains out, is the killer. Amber is Ghostface. So we're left to deal with that for a short amount of time. Not too long. Maybe five minutes. Um, and then we find out that Richie is the other killer. So just like the first one, there's two. And it's Richie and, and Amber. So they give their little reasons for doing it. And their reasons are fandom. Um, the reason that they have done this is because... The later stab movies, much like you've heard Scream fans do, which is the whole point of this movie. It was supposed to stab fandom is a mirror of Scream fandom because you hear all of the bitching about Scream 3 and Scream Tree and Scream 4, which I love, so don't come kill me because I like them. I like Scream 3 and I like Scream 4. So, but yeah, they really hated what they had done to the later Stab movies, so they figured out in their warped, demented brains, obsessed fan brains, that the reason that the later Stab movies sucked was because they were derivative of the first ones, but not based on true events. So they wanted to make a real-life slaughter so that the next Stab movies can be based and written and based on a real slaughter again like the first one was. So that was their reasoning for what they're doing. We get an excellent kill scene with Amber when they finally kill her and set her ass on fire. Um, when... Uh, Billy Loomis, when he helps Tara realize that there's a knife laying over there, and she gets a hold of it, and what was it she said, uh, when she finally gets the upper hand on Richie, you know, she's like, never fuck with the daughter of a serial killer, and she goes Lizzie Borden all over him, um, excellent stabs, she probably bladed his ass about 12 times. I didn't count them, so I'm not that kind of fan. Um, someone was making fun of a post on, I think, Killer Flicks, talking about Halloween and showing how absolutely ridiculous the constant obsession with just these five or six franchises there was a post on I believe it was Killer Flicks or somewhere like that where someone was talking about how Michael Myers's shoes were tied in one of the scenes and I'm like dude if you've got if you've got the time and the obsession to not only notice but analyze and come up with theories about the way Michael Myers' shoes are tied, you really, really need to come to my house and check out my 2000 movie collection and fucking watch another horror movie, okay? So, I don't know how many times she stabbed him. I'm sure somebody out there, though, has counted them and can probably tell me how her shoes are tied you weirdos but <laughs> in any event um, I really liked that and she finished him off with a throat cut which was pretty fucking gory and then she um, and then of course you have the don't leave them alive you know you got to shoot them in the head so she does that as well and then you get a really nice jump scare because I really didn't see Amber coming again she had been stabbed and all and that's what we're going to talk about so 
they took care of her. It's all said and done. They're going to leave now. It's all said and done. It's over. Mindy's all right. And the part I really didn't like was, what was his name, Chad? Both times that I watched it, I'm like, is that him in the ambulance? Is that Chad in the ambulance? Mindy's brother that got slashed out there in the yard? Because if that's Chad, that's fucked up and that's wrong. And I don't believe it. Chad is dead. Because there is no human being going to live through that. And that's one of the things we're fixing to talk about. Okay, so my judgment. I really, really love Scream 5. I did. I love Scream 5. It's uh, really great. I liked all of it. Now we can talk about my personal issues. Um, Scream 5 is a 7.5 out of 10 to me. And all three of them are personal. So, technically, I guess, if you're a Scream fan out there who, who are, like, thrilled with this movie and give it a 10-10 or whatever, um, that's cool. That's fine. I can see that. Because the stuff that I knocked off of this movie um, is all personal. Okay. One, you lost the point because you killed Dewey. I accept it. I understand it. Personally, I think you should kill all the motherfuckers. But from those just let's move on okay um but still whenever you got around to killing dewey you were gonna lose a point that's just it my other point that it lost i really am serious about my nudity in slashers okay i just i just call me whatever you want to but that shower scene with wes deserved a butt shot okay I'm just, you lost the point. As frivolous and trivia as you want to make that, it's my movie. I paid for it. It's mine. It belongs to me. It came out of my wallet. This is my movie. Not yours. I give it whatever fucking score I want to. And because you did not show me Wes's ass, you lost the point. That's my business, not yours. Well, I mean, I told you, so there you go. Now, where did it lose another half point? This is kind of a technical issue. Have you ever heard of a bullet sponge? Okay. Have you ever heard those complaints in um, fan reviews of movies? They're like, oh, I don't know. You know, actually, no, what you'll hear that most in is gaming. If you didn't know, my Steam account is on my channel up there. I have over 2,000 games or right at 2,000 games on Steam alone. That doesn't count hard copies. It doesn't count um, Origin. It doesn't count Uplay. So I'm a very big gamer. And in movies, I mean in games, well in movies too, but in games in which deaths are ridiculous, like, man, I, sh I played Call of Duty, you know, whatever. Call, Call of Duty 27. Did you notice what fucking bullet sponges they were? Okay, now what that means is that I just shot that dude 57 times with an AK and he still shot me and killed me in game. And that's called a bullet sponge. Okay, so gamers don't like bullet sponges because it's not fair. Okay, so this lost a half a point because this movie had an awful lot of knife sponges, okay? There's no fucking way in hell Tara should have lived through that attack, but I'll give you that, okay? Um, Amber stayed alive way too long with the injuries. And, <laughs> I mean... You killed my Dewey with two stabs, okay? I mean, you know, just like one to the gut up, one to the back up. You fucking stabbed Chad 217 times, and the motherfucker is like, from the ambulance. What the fuck is that? I want Chad dead. Not because I don't like him personally. He got stabbed 
50 times. Bad stab, too. Not, not, you know, it wasn't just nicking here and there. That motherfucker was like, mm, 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 mm. How do you fucking live through that? Nobody lives through that. You kill Dewey with two, but that motherfucker gets stabbed 50 times and he's like thumbs up in from an ambulance? That was stupid as fuck. And that's called a knife sponge. Okay. Um... Was Amber insane? And insane people can take a lot of damage. This is true. Do you remember Scream 4? <laughs> okay. But I was okay with the end of Scream 4 because that bitch was fucking nuts. Did you see what she did to herself? Okay. So, you know, crazy people, they can take a lot of damage. Chad wasn't a killer. He wasn't insane. He wasn't psychopathic. And he didn't have that adrenaline rush going that a psychopath has to be able to be shot and stabbed 206 times and still kill you you know so amber though that was a little too much they stabbed her and shot her too many times they should have knocked off a few stabs and a few things then i would have they you know her jump scare at the end would have been a little bit more believable i mean half the bitch was burnt up you know what i mean so stabbed, shot, and set on fucking fire, and you still come after him. Um, Richie's was alright. Richie's passed the sponge test, because from the time she started stabbing him to the time that he was dead with a throat cut was only about 60 seconds. And that's, that's alright. Because even if you are stabbed 25 times, if somebody can stab you 25 times inside of two minutes, you can live through all of them. I mean, you know, it does take you a moment to die. <laughs> so Richie got away with that. But, yeah, so the movie lost a half a point uh, because some, a couple of the kills were just too over the top. I loved them. But what I'm saying is that they should not, Chad should not have lived through that. Now, now if, if, if that wasn't Chad in the ambulance, please tell me. I'll give the point back. I'll give the half a point back and give this an 8 out of 10 if Chad was dead. Okay. But I think that was Chad in the ambulance. Somebody confirm it, please. Or I can go to Wikipedia and look it up. But, um, I mean, they tell anything. They tell every damn thing in a movie in Wikipedia. So, but... If that was Chad in that ambulance, you lost a half a point for ridiculous uh, knife sponge. It was just too much. So there you go. Seven and a half out of ten. Totally personal issues. Not even really a judgment of the movie itself. Just totally personal. My personal enjoyment level. That's what our... I'm not a critic. My scores are my personal enjoyment, my rank, and why, okay? So, technically, I have no problem with the movie. Story-wise, I thought it was great. Um, the acting was great. I liked everyone in it. It's fun. It was fun. But personal enjoyment-wise, it lost two and a half points. Um... The West Opportunity, Killing Dewey, and the only really technical aspect, and that was the absolutely ridiculous, really tests my suspension of disbelief, knife sponges that a couple of these people seem to be. So, and I didn't, I found none of the cast attractive either, except for Wes. So, Sam was cool though. Did Sam remind you of Eliza Dushku, Faith from Buffy the Vampire Slayer? If you've seen Scream, through that whole movie, I kept thinking, you know, Sam looks just like fucking Eliza Dushku. She really favors Eliza Dushku. There were scenes where I'm like, Jesus, that's Faith from Buffy, right? I mean, she really looks like Eliza Dushku. Uh, but yeah. So, yep, there you go, Scream 5, 
my rant and rave about it. I do love the movie. I'm very glad I got it. I watched it on BitChute before I bought it. Um, BitChute. Um, I've been mirroring my stuff on BitChute. I'm going back and moving all of my stuff over there. Um, not to leave YouTube, but just in case, you know, uh, people's channels get messed up. Um, but, yeah, I want to back up. And I really like BitChute. They've got a lot of cool movie channels. Got a lot of hate mongers, too, because of their free speech thing. But you can ignore all of that. I've never had to watch any video, you know, any of those crazy people that are over there that YouTube won't allow. <laughs> I've never had to watch any of their crazy crap um, because a lot of gamers, um, a lot of movie uploaders, a lot of movie reviewers, um, and they have been asking for regular content. You know, please bring some regular content so we're not just thought of as the place where the right-wing crazy people go. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of really good channels over there. Uh, Miss Carter, a friend of mine, Miss Carter, uh, she also loves Bit Shoot. We get to see a lot of good movies over there. So I'm glad I get to preview movies so that I don't waste money like I would have with Nope, which I hated. Maybe I should do a video about that. But um, love you, miss you, bye. Thank you very much for stopping by. That was Scream 5 2022. Directed by Matt Bertinelli, Open, and Tyler Gillett. Written by James Vanderbilt. You know, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette. I didn't do an intro to it, did I? I didn't sell this, so I just realized that. But, yeah, I really, really like it. I really loved it. I did have those personal issues, but they were just personal. Didn't really have anything to do with the movie. So, yeah, tell me what you think about Scream 5. And no, I wasn't bothered by Billy Loomis. I heard some people bitching about de-aging him with CGI or something like that. I don't care. I didn't notice. I really didn't notice. But a ghost won't age, you know. I mean, if that is what they did, you, you do know that someone's vision of somebody from 25 years ago... The visions don't age. The ghost doesn't age, if that's what you want to call it. Um, so if they did de-age him a little bit digitally, that's it's kind of something they would have had to have done. You know, I mean, memories don't age that way. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but if a friend of yours died when they were 17, um, and here you are 30 years later and you remember them, they're not 52 in your memory. You're still going to see them the way they were when they were alive. So, I don't know. People just want to bitch about something. But, uh, love you, miss you, bye. Always remember, never forget, you're a very, very, very special individual. And, um, yeah, I will see you in the next one. And, uh, ta-ta for now. And that was Scream 5. 7.5, only for personal issues. Really liked it. Loved this double feature. Now I've got the original Scream as well on Blu-ray. And yeah, see you soon.